Good day, students at home. My name is Mr. Dansu Okeaino, and I'll be taking you through mathematics class today. And the topic of consideration is circle theorem. If you go through your past question, you will discover that circle theorem is a topic that usually comes out during uh, every examination. Uh, most especially even the objective and the theory, you will see circle theorem. So in this class, I'm going to do justice to some of these theorems. Uh, one of the commonest one is the first theorem I have here. It states, the angle that an arc of a circle sustains at the center is twice that which it sustains at any point on the remaining parts of the circumference. And in order to help my students, I've decided to come up with a song because this topic is one of the topics that is somehow boring, you know, when students go about it. Okay, so what is the song? There is this common song you sing uh, in your school, Oh, when the saints go marching in. And you sit in the church, sing it in the church as well. So I would like to use that tune here. The angle that an arc of A Circle substance at the center is twice that which is substance at any point on the remaining part of the circumference. One more time, the angle that an arc of a circle substance at the center is twice that which is substance at any point on the remaining part of the circumference. The more you sing that song, you will definitely remember this theorem, and of course, you'll be able to apply it. Let's look at an example. Going by the theorem, here is the diagram that you know, we are going to look at. We have three important diagrams under this theorem. The first one is this. Okay, you have this diagram. And according to the theorem, the angle that an arc, this time around, arc AB, the angle that an arc a, B of a circle, substance, substance means forms. This angle, this arc form an angle at the center, we call it what? X in this case. So the angle that arc A, B forms at the center of that circle is twice. Is twice that which is substance at any point. That means this arc form an angle at the remaining part of the circumference, in this case, at this point. So the angle here, which is x, will be twice of the angle which is here, and, and that is y. So x equals to 2 times y. So that is what the theorem is talking about. For example, if you have a question like this, and you're asked to find m, just as we've discussed, here is the angle at the center in this case. The angle at the circumference is 50. And the theorem says the one at the center, which is m, will be twice of the one at the circumference. That is 50. So we say m equals to 2 times 50. And the answer will be 100 degrees. Good. The second diagram that is connected with this theorem is this diagram you can see here. All right? With this diagram, anytime you see something like this, maybe an objective or theory, you should understand that this diagram is associated with this theorem. For example, if I ask you what is your name, and you tell me your name is success, anytime anybody sees your picture anywhere, and somebody asks, what, who is this person? So, oh, he is success. That means they've associated your representation with your name. So anytime you see a diagram like this, what you come to mind is this very theorem. And that will always help you. You have a question here. For example, if your V is 60 degrees, if your V is 60 degrees, then you are asked to find what? W. So we have said that V, or the angle at the center, will be twice of the one at the circumference. So since V is 60 here, it means 60 degrees equals to 2 times W. And that's, you know, when you multiply, you have 2W. 
So we need to make W subject of the formula. We divide both sides by 2. Okay? When you divide both sides by 2, you have W equals to 30 degrees. So, for theory purpose, what we've written here, V equals to 2W, if you are solving theory problem, make sure you put beside that very statement or equation there, tell them the reason why you said the V is equal to twice of W. And what is the reason in this case? It is this very theorem. But we have the short form of this theorem. Just tell them angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle at the circumference. By putting that, of course, you are going to have a B1 there. All right? That's called independent mark. Okay, good. The third diagram under this theorem is when you have a diagram like this. Okay? This very diagram, don't forget I told you, it's like saying one person having three names. The three names are associated what? with this theorem. Anytime you see this diagram, watch the term, this theorem should always what? come to mind. So you are having A at this point here, and you are having B here. Okay? So what you need to do is for you to find A, A will be twice of what you have here, which is B in this case. And so, you have different questions, of course, in the past question. So for this segment, I'm going to give you a short assignment, which we are, of course, going to do later. So you check your past question, you see a series of them, but I have two that I've written out here. So if you check 2007, that's your WASI, 2007, question 24, that, uh, address, um, that question addresses one of the questions. Then 2008, question 11B. 2008, question 11B. That is a theory part now. You are going to see a question under this theorem. So we go for a short uh, break, and when we come back, we are going to discuss more. Okay, welcome back. Uh, another aspect of circle theorem that I'll be concentrating on, which students also dread, is tangent to a circle. And I have, uh, we have this theorem there on the tangent to a circle. The tangent to a circle at any point is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of contact. The tangent to a circle at any point is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of contact. Look at this very circle. You will notice that I have a line here. At the point of connection between the circle and the line, we have what we call point of contact. So one that is point of contact, the line becomes a tangent, that is tangential line. So in a situation uh, like this, if you have a radius drawn from the center of that circle, such that it touches the point of contact, then the angle that will be formed there will be angle 90 degrees, all right? 90 to this side, 90 to this other side. That was what they meant when they said the tangent to a circle at any point is perpendicular. Back to your primary school, you remember perpendicular line. Good. So let's take an example to drive the message home here. You have this circle, and you have a radius drawn from the center, of course, the line drawn from the center of the circle to the circumference. A radius here, a radius. Then you have a chord here, and this angle has been given to be 36 degree, then this other one given to be M. So you were asked to find M. Don't forget, you can see there is a radius drawn to the point of contact meeting the tangential line. That means the angle that will be formed at that point is angle 90 degrees. So it means that if I add M and 36 together, I'm going to have 90 degrees. So I can say that M plus 36 degrees equals to 90 degrees. For the sake of uh, theory, you must immediately open a bracket and tell us the reason why you said M plus 36 degrees equals to 90 degrees. And what is the reason? It is this theorem. You can shorten it by saying the tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of contact. And that will give you your B1 there uh, once again. All right, as you go on, then the next thing is for you to just do your normal arithmetic, 90 minus 36, and from there you get M equals to 54. I have another question for you there. Go to 2000 and, uh, year 2000, in your WASP booklet, question 13, theory. You are going to see a question under that. 
We have a timer. Welcome back. Uh, we are going to continue from um, where we stopped. This time around, we'll be looking at alternate segments, which is another important aspect of uh, tangent to a circle. And the theorem that is connected with that is this. And I'm going to read out quickly the angle between the tangent to a circle and the chord through the point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Okay, to help you, I equally have a song for this. You know, all this wordy, uh, you know, too much lengthy theorem. I have song. So the song here is, I will take you back to Barney and Friends. You know that song? I love you, you love me. Okay, so we're going to uh, use that soon. The angle between the tangent to a circle and a chord through the point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. Okay, because of my time, make sure you listen, you, you sing the song one more time, and then, of course, you are going to appreciate it. Okay, let's take a typical example. You have this question given to you. Here is a diagram, okay? And you have a triangle in it. So this diagram, of course, still explaining the theorem. This diagram you are having here, there is a chord here. I decided to use red uh, marker here. So there is a chord here, and here is the tangential line. Then look at this angle that I called M, this very angle here. So the angle formed between them, according to this theorem, is saying that it will be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. This is a mathematical uh, kind of uh, technical word. Alternate segment this time around is talking about opposite segment. You remember? Minor segment and major segment. So this chord divide this circle into two, ignoring this other chord. So you have minor segments, then you have major segments. So the angle formed here will be equal to the one formed in the alternate segment or opposite segment. That's talking about this. So going by this theorem, M equals to N. In other words, you have angle BPT. BPT, this very angle, is equal to angle, this very angle, PST. All right. So if you understood that, the same thing goes for this other side as well. Let's take a quick uh, look at a question. And uh, I will have to... You know, we have to go to 2005, question five. 2005, question five. I want you to open there quickly. 2005, question five of your WASI booklet. Okay, it should be there by now. All right. Okay, so let's go on. You have the diagram given to you, and you were asked to find, of course, you know, um, two questions there. You, have, you were asked to find angle C, A, X and angle A, B, Y. That was what you were asked to find in that question. So how do we go about it? If you look at the diagram, you are going to see that we have the tangential line this time around, just as you know what we just concluded. Then you have a triangle, this very triangle here, you know, in connection with this very diagram. I believe you can see that, this very triangle here. Then there is still another triangle you can see this way in connection with this tangential line. All right. So if you look at that, how do we solve the problem? The first thing is if you look at angle APS, angle APS, in this case, uh, sorry about that. Okay, uh, ADB rather, angle ADB, where's ADB? Look at your diagram, ADB. Angle ADB was given to us, which is 20 degrees. Angle ADB. Now, angle ADB will be equal to angle ACB. I decided to use red marker here, telling you that it was not part of the question initially. So these two angles will be equal, and that you will remember. Angles in the same segment are equal. All right? You have been taught. So it means that this angle is 20 degrees. Then angle B, A, Y, we can see B, A, Y, B, A, Y, where is R, Y? Can you see it, this place? B, A, Y. Angle B, A, Y is equal to angle A, C, B, A, C, B. 
B A Y, that's this angle here, is equal to B C, sorry, A C B. That is referring to the angle we just discussed. Okay, because of the time here, all right, I believe as you continue to uh, solve more, you are going to definitely appreciate this uh, program. So we have assignment here. Go to 1999, question 7B, 2000, and question 40. So if you diligently go through, you should get your uh, results to those two questions. Thank you very much.